Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress reporting on the Women's World Bliss Championships 2019 which was held at the end of December. This is my second video on this event in the first video which is video number 585 on the Chess to Impress YouTube channel. I reported on the Men's Championship and showed a game from the great Vladimir Kramnik but this video is about the women's section. It was Yekaterina Lagno who successfully defended her World Blitz title from 2018. She won again with 13 points out of 17 games. The silver medal went to Anna Muzichuk from Ukraine with half a point less and the bronze medal went to China to Tan Zhonggi, former classical world champion who scored 12 points out of 17 games. The same number as Valentina Gunina from Russia but Tan Zhonggi had a better tie break so she picked up the bronze medal. In this video I will show you a spectacular game which was played in round 6 between the sister of the silver medalist Anna Muzichuk, her sister is Maria, Maria Muzichuk, also a former classical world champion. She had the white pieces against Nana Zagnitze. It's the 29th of December 2019, round 6 of the Blitz. E4 from Maria Muzichuk and Nana Zagnitze from Georgia played the Sicilian. Knight f3, e6, d4, takes, takes and knight c6, the Taimanov variation of the Sicilian. Knight c3, queen c7, bishop e3 and a6. Now the main moves are either bishop d3 or queen d2, but Maria Muzichuk plays a rare move, queen f3. Bishop d6, probably looks a bit strange to go in front of your d-pawn, but as we'll see on the next move, black wants to go to e5 with that bishop. Castling queenside, that was the idea behind queen f3, get the queen out of the way and castle queenside. Don't think you can take on h2, like Bobby Fischer, because you will lose the bishop after g3. Zagnitsa did not go for that, she played bishop e5 as mentioned. Muzichuk took on c6, and here b takes c6 is the preferred move by the engine, but Zagnitsa took with the d-pawn, and that is less strong. The engine now gives this variation, it likes knight a4 as a move, and let's just show you the first line of the engine. Then b5 is possible, kicking that knight, but there is bishop b6, attacking the queen, that bishop is protected by the knight on a4. The queen has to play, and then rook d8 check, king e7, and queen a3 check, with an advantage for white. Nice variation. White's pieces are infiltrating into black's camp, and black has lost his castling rights. But after d takes c6, Muzichuk did not play knight a4, she played bishop d4. Knight e7 developing, the bishop was traded, and queen e3. Now black castled, and f4 from Muzichuk attacking the queen. The queen dropped back, and now we see a move, h4, a move that we see more and more at Grandmaster level in all sorts of positions. A lot more than, let's say, 10, 20 years ago. Everybody is pushing their h-pawn nowadays. Muzichuk is going to attack Black's King. c5, h5, b5, expanding on the queen side. It's always exciting with opposite castling. Black castled on the king side, white castled on the queen side, and both players are going after the opponent's king. Muzichuk keeps going with the h-pawn, and g6 to make sure no lines get opened to the black king. g4, bishop b7, and bishop h3, preparing the f4, f5 push to open up some lines on the king side. Rook a d8, centralizing the rook. And there comes f5. Now the e5 square is available and black goes there with the queen and queen g5 attacking the knight but it is a bad move from Muzichuk. White is losing time with this queen maneuver. Zagnitze played f6 attacking the queen and the queen dropped back to e3. The queen is back where she came from which gives black the chance to use this tempo to play b4. 
to remove one of the defenders of the e4 pawn. The knight went to a4, and now bishop takes e4, picking up a pawn and attacking the rook. So white does not have time to take on c5 to win the pawn back because the rook in the corner is hanging. It's also handy for black that the queen is protected. This queen is protected by the pawn that was played up when white made that queen maneuver. The queen is now protected so the bishop is not pinned. Muzichuk took on d8, rook takes and rook e1, saving that rook and threatening the bishop. This bishop is now attacked twice. Here rook d4 has to be played with a very good position for black, but Zagnitsa did not play that move. She played e takes f5. That pawn was taken and bishop takes f5. Black is two pawns up. And it seems black is doing well, but now the tactical fireworks really start, and that's why I picked this game. It's not good to take on e5. Let's look at the variation. f takes, bishop takes f5, knight takes f5, rook takes e5. Then black can take the h-pawn, and knight takes c5. The dust has settled, and this is better for black. Here's an extra pawn, and these two pass pawns on the king's side look very dangerous. It will take white a while to make a passed pawn on the queen side herself. So back to the position from the game after bishop takes f5. We just saw that taking the queen is not good. But white has a nice maneuver. And Muzichuk found it. Queen b3 check. Does it win the queen? Because it's checked to the king. And attacking the queen at the same time. Is white winning black's queen? Well not quite yet. Because black can play c4. Nice move. Shielding a check and counter-attacking white's queen. It's the only move actually. And this game will most likely finish in a draw. Let's look at the variation. Queen takes c4 check. And then queen d5. And we'll see in a minute why queen d5 could not be played immediately without that c5 c4 push. Let's continue this variation first. Queen takes d5 check. Rook takes. Then the knight is hanging. But the bishop is also hanging. And then white can make a draw with rook g7 check. King has to go in the corner to prevent losing the a7 pawn. Rook f7, threatening, checkmate. So king g8 and rook g7 check. And this is a move repetition. Back to queen b3 check, the move from the game. Well, Zagnitsa did not play c4. She played queen d5 immediately. Also saving the queen and shielding the check. And what is wrong with this? Well, now white has a very nice move, and if you want to look for it, put the video on pause and look how white can win this game. Muzichu could have won this game with a nice move, rook d1. And queen takes d1 would be checkmate, but it's also illegal because the queen is pinned. So black has to take on b3, but then white has an in-between move. Rook takes d8 is check. White does not have to take the queen straight away. King f7, and now you take the queen back, and there is bishop takes h3, that bishop is still hanging. But after rook h8, white has a winning position with his extra exchange. With her extra exchange, I should say. So after queen d5, rook d1 is a winning move. But Muzichuk did not find it. She took the unprotected knight on e7. And that is a move that deserves two question marks. Because now Zagnitsa found the move c4. It's threatening the queen and it's threatening checkmate on d1 because the black queen is no longer pinned and there's really nothing to do against this. You have to sacrifice your queen to avoid checkmate but you will be checkmated after all. Maria Muzichuk resigned in this position. Nanak Zatnitsa had won but neither of these two grandmasters were able to win a medal in a 2019 Women's Blitz World Championship. And you can still take part in our game, Rick with White, against a chest to impress viewers with Black. On the 27th move, I have taken a pawn. Knight b5 takes a pawn on d6. And now it is your turn. What would you play for Black on the 27th move? You can take part in this game by putting your move in the comment section underneath this video. And by doing so, you will be in the raffle. At the end of the game, I will raffle a chess book amongst the viewers who have taken part in this game. Made available by my sponsor, the best to Z. A web shop for chess books. So I'm looking forward to seeing your move in the comment section.
and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel, and please leave a comment. I will read them all, and I will reply to them all. If you like this video, please tell your friends about it, and please share it on social media by clicking the share button on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter, and on Facebook. This is Rick, for Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.